Now the Michelle Traconis case, she was sentenced today to 14 and a half years behind bars. It was an emotional day at Stanford Superior Court as friends and family on both sides spoke. News 8's Dennis House and Eva Zamaris joined us live from Stanford. And, and Darren, good evening. This is the latest chapter in a story that began more than five years ago, Memorial Day weekend 2019, when police say Fotis Dulos murdered his estranged wife, Jennifer Farber Dulos, about six miles from here in the town of New Canaan at her rented home. She moved there to flee him in Farmington. Now, it was a very emotional day. As you heard, it was a long day. The courtroom was absolutely packed. We're estimating more than 100 people were here today for the sentencing. And truly, as we were waiting for Judge Randolph to say what that sentencing was, you could hear a pin drop in the courtroom. Take a look. Michelle Traconis sentenced to 20 years in prison. Total effective sentence, 20 years, execution suspended after 14 and one half years five years probation. Before she was sentenced, the loved ones of Jennifer Farber Dulos addressed the court. Jennifer filled her children with love, wisdom, and humor. Jennifer would have been very proud of her children's accomplishments. I miss Jennifer's intelligence, her soft, sweet voice, and the sound of her laughter including her five children. To protect them and their identity, pictures were shown instead. Mom and dad are words that only bring trauma and grief. I will never again share those simple moments that mean everything. She was my favorite person in the world, my role model. She is still somewhere in my heart. My mom will now never get to see me or my siblings grow up, something I had known she had always wanted. They described the unimaginable pain and sadness they felt and experienced these last five years. If you have just the least bit of humanity, I suggest you let all of us know exactly what happened that day and where my mother is. I want to end with the lesson my mom taught me. Leave everything the same or better than you found it. Michelle Traconis, you did the opposite. You should be punished. More than a dozen people spoke on behalf of Draconis, family, friends, and members of her church. She is the heart of our family, and without her, our lives would be profoundly broken. Had I known the danger Michi was in, I would have immediately removed my daughter and granddaughter from his presence. Draconis became visibly emotional throughout. I am begging you to listen. I need my mom in my life. Not just as a parent, but as a source of strength and understanding. As a father, plead with you, Josh Randall, to show mercy in my daughter's sentence. Traconis spoke as well. I am a person of profound faith, and I have been praying and will continue to pray for those who suffered and still suffer. Even with a 20-year sentence, Farber Dulos' loved ones say nothing can be done to bring her back, and it's a loss they'll feel forever. I am lonely for Jennifer every day. My conversation with her lasted for 46 years. It ended on May 24th, 2019, forever silenced. It was certainly an emotional moment when the children testified, all five of them, and two of the boys pointed at Michelle Draconis when they delivered their victim impact statements. And another one said, I'm going to talk to you in English because that's how we always spoke to you in English. And I know the Spanish English, the language barrier was an issue during the trial. It was. She had an interpreter present during the course of the trial. And this was really the first time that we had heard Michelle Traconis speak over the course of the trial and truly over the last five years. The only thing that we heard from her during the trial was those videos, those interviews with the police when the defense had rested their case. We had asked her if she wanted to make a comment and she didn't want to. So this was truly the first time we had heard from her. We learned some new information too from these victim impact statements. Number one, they testified in these statements that the kids went to school with armed guards yeah. right after Jennifer Dulos disappeared. They were, they feared, Gloria Farber and her family feared that he would Fotis Dulos would try to take the kids away. So they went to school with armed guards. 
and a number of friends and family that we heard from today during those victim impact statements just very much described the pain, the fear, the sadness that they felt in those hours, days, weeks, and years that truly followed. You and I sat a couple rows behind the kids, and it was really touching, Eva, that they, they, they seemed very close. They all sat next to each other. And during the breaks, they'd come back, and they'd sit next to each other, but in different order. And it was really empowering and powerful to see truly the village around these kids. Absolutely. Back to you, Ann and Darren.